Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Practical Farmers of Iowa's live from. We are live here at Bluegate Farm with Farmer down here in Sheridan, Iowa. My name is Jacqueline Benertensky. I'm the horticulture coordinator at, at uh, Practical Farmers of Iowa. And we are going to be talking today with Jill and her team about their pack house setup. Tuesday is CSA Pack Day here at Bluegate Farm, which grows vegetables. And um, we are going to hear a lot about that. So if you are a viewer at home on the internet, please go ahead and pop your questions in the chat. And we are going to have that. Uh, we're going to be able to post questions as we go. And we're going to have a lot of great conversation with Jill. We're excited to learn about her whole process here because CSA Pack Day is a big one on any vegetable farm. So Jill, please go, go ahead. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, thanks for coming, Jacqueline and Emma. And thanks for having an interest in, in CSA Pack Day. Normally, like Jacqueline said, this is not a day that we would probably invite people to hang out on our farm. It tends to be kind of a crazy day. Um, but, but it's fun to have this, this opportunity. Um, so we are packing today for CSA delivery number 11. So we're just, we just passed the halfway mark for our 20 week season. Um, we're packing 50, we normally pack 58 shares a week, uh, that go out to our membership, um, both locally in Knoxville and in Des Moines. And, uh, so today we are, we've brought in most of the harvest. It's, it's getting close to noon. So usually we're wrapped up by noon as far as things that come in from the field. The last thing we do is herb share. So we're, we're throwing together the last handful of things to come in. Yeah. Um, do you want to go ahead and zoom in on what they're working on there? Yeah. So today herb share is getting uh, Thai basil, curly parsley and rosemary. So we're, Bringing in our rosemary, we're gonna go next door to the rosemary, bringing in our parsley. We're gonna go to our rosemary next. And, uh, and they brought in basil earlier, so that's gonna wrap up our harvest day. We're gonna, right there. So I see your team as, you're, as they're working, mm -hmm. have all their tools with them. They have their little snips to trim off the bottom yes. of um, the stems. They have a little baggie full of the clear little um, rubber bands. Yep. And they pop them right in the basket, and you have, or in the in the bucket, and yes. you have a little water in the bucket. We do, we do. So all the herbs get get um, harvested, banded, retrimmed, and then they go straight into water. It keeps them the freshest, and uh, just make sure that the CSA is getting everything really at, at top quality. We want to make sure that it's going to last as long as possible mm -hmm. for them once they get it in. So very good. And of course, the herbs you said are the last, the last. The herb share is sort of the last component because they're it is. delicate and, you know, more sensitive to handling. Yes. Sure. So, of course, this is rosemary and this like looks like it might That's be good. a perennial bed for you. Is that right? It is. It is. Um, we dig up, because we use so much rosemary, um, we actually will dig up this entire plot this fall and move three quarters of it into our high tunnels. A quarter nice. of it as an insurance policy goes into our nursery for the winter um, and then they get replanted. And so you can see this, this line in front were replacement plants that we added this year. So these are first year plants, but everything else has been with us. Some of, one of this plant actually moved 16 years ago with us from Houston. Aww. So we, we have a long, long history with our rosemary. We like to, to uh, make it last as long as we can. Excellent, excellent. And how many different kinds of herbs do you typically pack in your herb share? Each three. Week? Three herbs. Three. Okay, and then our, our CSA gets the whole CSA gets basil every other week. Herb Share gets basil every week and two other herbs. So this week they'll get two different kinds of basil because everybody's getting basil. And then they'll get three other herbs on the side. Nice. And that's that's an optional share for us. So they, they pay extra for that and, and we're happy to do it. Okay, very cool, very cool. And how many herbs would you say overall you have on oh, the farm? A lot. Um, I've never counted. Uh, Twenty plus thirty. Awesome. I I don't know. They we use them both for our herb share. We use them in our um, jam and seasoning business, and mm -hmm. we, they also go into our bouquets. So we we are pretty heavy on herb use and square footage. That's fantastic. Excellent. Awesome. That's the end of it. That's Gorgeous. the end of today's harvest. All right, dogs. All right. Let's go. Okay. So we are going to head over to the pack shed. Yes. Um, and maybe as we go, Jill, you can tell us a little bit, like give us a little overview. Emma, I don't know if you can 
pan out and kind of get a look at what we're looking at here. I guess this is Marion County. This is Marion County. Beautiful county um, down the here. Southernmost Marion County. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very lucky that, that this is where we get to spend 99.9% .9 of our time. <laughs> yeah. um, and we forget sometimes that it is such a, such a privilege to, to live here and to farm here. Um, so it's nice to have that reminder. Uh, so we have, we steward 40 acres of my parents' original 80, and uh, six of that is in um, certified naturally grown vegetables. So we're a 100% chemical free farm. Um, we have an acre of asparagus, and wow. then five acres of mixed vegetables and uh, uh, fruit trees, brambles. Um, we raise just almost everything you can raise in Iowa with the exception of sweet potatoes, sweet corn, and cilantro. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a busy place. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so no cilantro, that's interesting. Oh, can't do it. Cannot do you it. You have that I, genetic. I have the genetic <laughs> predisposition to think it tastes like soap and it smells twice as bad. Yeah. yeah. So we, we always tell our customers, if there's something that, that you can't haven't been getting from us and you want it, let us know, except cilantro, we don't do it. We don't do it. That's awesome. I love that. It's awful. That is why someone owns their own business. That's exactly right. There are so many great places that you can buy sweet corn and sweet potatoes and cilantro, and yeah. you should do that. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well, lead us on Come in. Come on Let's in. The pack So we, we took you, brought you in in the most complicated way possible. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> so we are set up uh, for today's seat. We've got a table set up and, and everything is in and we're ready to go is our layout every Tuesday at just about this time. Um, so we would usually get everything to where it needs to go. We lay out our tables, we lay out our boxes, we double check that our, all of our boxes are here and in the right order. Um, and they usually do some small maintenance tasks. And then normally we start packing boxes at uh, either 1.30 or 1.45, depending on if it's tomato season or not, because tomatoes take longer. And I know that you're, you're adapting your schedule a little bit for us sure. today sure. to accommodate um, our life from the farm and I really appreciate that sure. but um and so just to let our viewers know what we are seeing today is not exactly um what their process is because they're they are making a, a couple of accommodations um, we really appreciate that sure so, sure we were happy to so um what what we would do is and evidently you have our our pack list available as a photo attached somewhere yeah um so we have a sheet of paper that I generate every Monday that tells us everything that's going in the box and then it's um, it's uh, listed numerically so that we know our pack order for the day as well as that serves as our harvest list for the morning and technical difficulties um, so our members every Boop. we've got towels from heaven To our boxes, not so much. <laughs> We're going in and out. Gonna, yeah. Do you need to stand outside the door? I might. But. All right, so we're going to try again. We're going to lay in the first set of things that go in the boxes just to kind of give you a sense of, of how we do um, our load. Our numbered list is really important um, because that tells us the order of pack. So my team of three of our five crew members, my team of three does the load every Tuesday. We go through our list and whatever's numbered one goes into our boxes first. Whatever number two obviously goes into the boxes second. But the person dropping item number two cannot put something in the box unless item number one is already in there. So that gives us a bit of a check and balance to make sure that we don't accidentally skip a box or get off somewhere. One of the things that I've been really impressed um, as you've been telling me about um, 
your system this morning, or I was telling you about your process this morning, is that you have really strong systems in place about like those rules about like this is number one, and like if number two isn't, or if number one's not in there, you don't drop number two. And so it seems like there's a lot of staff conversation, a lot of staff training, and a lot of um, checks in place. The systems are really strong. There are. We've been doing CSA, uh, I believe this is our 15th year, and we've learned a lot. In that time, we've learned from other CSA farms who are who are kind enough to share their information. But mostly, we've learned from silly mistakes that we've made, and mm -hmm. um, I really hate making the same mistake more than once. So we have lots of rules um, of how things go in, how things get loaded, how we manage the information. Um, our customers have have come to expect a pretty high standard from us, both of, of service and quality of produce. And because of that, we need to make sure that that, that continues. We don't want to let that slide. Mm -hmm. And we, we want to be pretty predictable. Um, and I want our CSA members to know that they're going to get a solid delivery. And the one thing we don't do that, that I think our members wish we would do a little more of is letting them know farther ahead of time. So our members don't know until noon. In fact, in uh, about 15 minutes, the, the newsletter will drop and they'll know what they're getting in today's box. And uh, we've occasionally gotten a, a little feedback that people have said, oh, it would be so much easier for me if I knew fat farther ahead of time so I could do my grocery shopping on the weekend. And I've said, I completely understand and I appreciate your feedback and I don't even know what's going in the boxes sometimes until uh, it goes in the boxes. Yep. So we do have uh, that challenge of, of, I would rather them have accurate information than early information. So that's, that's kind of the standard that we've held to. Um, and I, I suppose that people who that doesn't work for, they're probably not our CSA members. Well, and or they or they are able to plan right. around it or right. they enjoy the adventure right and you know <laughs> and that's really that's really the key and when people when people um either leave the csa or decline to join the csa and they feel bad about it you know csa doesn't work for everyone and in fact csa doesn't work for most people and unless you have um a serious interest in cooking your own uh lots of your own food for um 20 weeks of the year and can see it as an adventure, it's probably not going to be successful for you. Um, so, um, okay, so one of the other things that I really loved, and, and maybe you describe a little bit of your, uh -huh. your flow here, um, all you have the names, everybody has a sticker with a name on it. Yep. In fact, I see it seems like this can't, this household gets two yes. shares. Yes. And they're all in alphabetical order, they which are. is delicious. They, uh, <laughs> for, for those of us control freak farmers out there, yeah. Um, that helps us track that stagger schedule that I mentioned earlier um, of the sliding things that not everyone gets every week. If those boxes aren't always the same order, then it's really hard to track um, the flow of who's getting broccoli this week. So this week's plus ones or, or staggered items are broccoli, cauliflower, um, okra, and cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And I need to know last week who got those things and two weeks ago who got those things so I know who's getting them this week to make sure that everybody's getting on that rotation. Um, and so, you know, someone doesn't end up getting eggplant five weeks in a row because most people... There's a threshold. Interested. There's a threshold. Yes, there's a threshold. Well, and that's important. one of the things that I'm really impressed about too. As you talked about this, Jill, is that um, is the commitment to, to to your customers and to the level of quality that you're delivering to them. Because, um, you know, you have the harvest list, and then the other the other document, and maybe we can get this in the chat as well. Um, is um, is that you have that the what did you, the, Our stagger the schedule. stagger schedule? Yeah. So you know, like. You know, this week everybody's getting this, and then you're also getting one of the following four things, but you don't want to give someone eggplant four, four weeks in a row, right. or broccoli five weeks in a row, or whatever, and so you make sure and stagger that, and um, I think that's really exceptional. It, thank you. It's, I, I, it's nice to have people appreciate the level of anal retentiveness that we have here at Blue <laughs> Day Farm. You know, I can't, there's so much of, about vegetable farming that I can't control, that the things that can... <laughs> I'm just going to hold them tight in my That's fist good. as long as possible. That's good. Um, and But it also helps our communication. My crew knows what to expect every week because we do it the same every single week. And that helps our efficiency 
and lets us build in some of those things that helps that flow happen. We've recently been talking about efficiency on the farm and how do we do tasks faster? And the conclusion that we've recently come to is faster is unimportant, efficiency is important, faster will follow. Nice. And so how do we do things with fewer movements and fewer containers? How can we touch something fewer times? Mm -hmm. um, our most recent lesson is figuring out that we don't have to carry containers full of produce when we're running this system. So we have a nice concrete floor. We have rolling dollies. And we just keep putting stuff on a dolly. We roll it around the system. And then we don't have to carry it. You can get things into boxes. And I'm embarrassed to say how long it took us to figure out that things roll much more easily than they're carried. <laughs> That's, you know. I mean, you know, man didn't yeah. invent the wheel on day one. So. True. Yes. Um, yeah. Can I have, oh, and I see here's your team rolling some of those dollies over yep. right now. Could yep. we, could you, could you pull one of the dollies out just like right up in this area so Emma can. Hannah, pull, come forward can since you're going it. forward anyway. Or film it rather. There's one on there, and then that one. Um, so this is summer oh, and squash. Just, and did you guys just make these, or did um, you buy them? So most of the, most of them we bought and or adapted, and you can see that this one is also holding the tubs that we use for transporting our veggie mail orders. Mm -hmm. um, I'm short on dollies because it's potato and tomato season, and we're rolling. Um, stacks of those around as well. So this is holding our storage containers, but it rolls just fine as a, uh, most of the time. We, we have one with questionable wheels and it must be that one. Um, <laughs> of course. But so when um, we're harvesting, we stack all of our totes of greens up on one dolly, roll those into the walk-in, then when they come out, they all come out as one. And we just start working our way down through that stack as we're loading boxes. So it's, it's just another example of times when we can touch something less. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Um, I did have one question in the chat from a few minutes back. It says, is there a minimum or box benchmark for packing? Um, as far as, I'm not sure about the question. Does that mean how many items are in the box or how much time or um, I'm not sure which question to answer. Maybe I can get our viewer. I think that's from a um, minute. Oh, a minute per box. Minutes oh. per box. Oh, yeah. Work. There's someone that's even more anal retentive than I am. We don't, um, because we don't, because we're not packing each box individually, all we're doing is a drop and go. So I don't, I have never figured out minutes per box because it changes with every um, week depending on what goes in. So I know that weeks we pack tomatoes um, because we pack our tomatoes open stock, um, we need to allow an extra 15 minutes for that pack day. Um, if we're not doing things that we need to sort through as we load them, then that pack goes faster and we don't need that extra 15 minutes. Well, and like, and I guess you said earlier too, it's more about sort of the touches and the efficiency than it is about the time. It is. And so maybe that's not the metric. It is. That and is the most useful in, in your system. Right. And so we know, we backed it out, so we know what time we have to start the pack and I need to pull out of the farm to start the deliveries by 3.15. Mm -hmm. So everything gets packed and then it gets stacked and covered and then we may do another task if we're done early and then at three straight up we start loading the van so it's it's more about how it fits into the schedule of our day than um time out per box gotcha gotcha very good all right and then going back to the beginning when we were out in the herb garden there's a question about do you have a favorite type of band that you use for the oh herbs? i do the <laughs> silly little silicone hair bands yeah that, that you can buy in the, like yeah. five thousand pack um they last better they're not as affected by uv so because we carry them in little clear plastic bags when we're out in the field and they may go out a number of times before they get used so uv stable is pretty important for us they're clear Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not weird colored. We can see if they get dirty. They shouldn't be. We only use them once. But um, I, I, I am 99.9% .9 sure they are food grade. Uh, but that's worked, that's worked the best for us. Okay. Great. Are there other things that you tried that you didn't like? You mentioned um, that the colored bands. We small, used small colored rubber bands in the past, and I didn't love them. We spent a lot of time snapping ourselves when they broke. Um, they didn't hold up 
to the activity. They didn't hold up to the stems. And I think they were harder on the stems, mm -hmm. some of our more tender stemmed items. Well, and I was going to say, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with the, I have a daughter who has longer hair. And so yeah. I'm familiar with the, um, those bands. And they do, they're not as stretchy, but they're, they're more suited to something that is more tender. Yeah, like yeah, they're really herbs. Mm. Yeah, they're just, I don't, I'm not sure what exactly it is. They're slightly wider, so they don't crease stems mm. as much, which means longer stem life. Um, but they've, they've worked great for us. All of our, I believe all of our harvested herbs, I can't even think of one that we don't use them for. Very clever, very clever. So this is, well. this is fun to watch the process here. Um, as you watch, as we watch your team um, loading, like they go into the walk-in, they bring something out, they get it loaded on the, they get it loaded on the yep. dollies, and they just start at A, and they wind around, and they follow the system, and now they're all the way over to, and S. so number number one has stopped, and yep. so number like item two is waiting for item two to get. Right load it up right and this is this is a little misleading normally we would bring everything that we're going to pack out mm -hmm. and just have it around the perimeter of the room so that we're not going in and out of the walk-in sure um uh, so this is part of our uh, change it up for the day um practice i guess so so normally you wouldn't see that um sure but it it's working just fine for well, today i appreciate the accommodation and it's super helpful to see you know, to see how they're, to how the process goes. Great. And tell me again what it is you have in the bags. Uh, red potatoes. Okay, great. Which, yeah, you are saying you just dug those. We did, yeah. Thing. We're about halfway through our potato harvest. So we prepackaged those yesterday um, so that we could put the rest of them in storage. So uh, those were, those were a, a precast ready to go thing today. Um, and this is the start of heavy box season for sure. It's good. It's good. That's it's I that keep time telling of year. myself it's good. It's what everybody it's what everybody waits for yes. all year with the CSAs. It's I'm sure. So true. Okay, so let's see here, Jill. You had talked about being um, being certified naturally grown. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? I can. Um, so we are a, a chemical free farm. Um, in in general practice, we don't even use organically approved chemicals. Um, I think there's great value in, in being certified organic, but it, it doesn't really match um, our needs and it doesn't match what our customers are asking for. So we went with uh, certified naturally grown CNG, which is an independent certification. Um, it uses the USDA basic standards and, um, and then says thank you very much to the uh, organic certifying agencies and it's a farmer driven organization so it was started by farmers it's administered by farmers and it's also inspected by farmers so okay. i do have an annual inspection but i'm not only required to have an inspection on my farm i'm i'm required to actually perform an inspection the inspections great. Uh, and you can't trade inspections with another farm so we have a there's a group of about four certified naturally grown farms in central iowa and so we just rotate one to the other so that, that we're not doing that tit for tat um, inspecting, but um, so every every fourth year I will inspect the same farm. Uh, this year I inspected a new farm down by Osceola, and I appreciate that it's um, that it, it does use the organic standards. It gives me a framework within which I can be accountable, but really I'm accountable to my customers. But it gives them that level of understanding that that I do have. An official level of accountability. Yep. But I appreciate that it's a farmer conversation, so that yeah. both accepting and performing these inspections, I have time to to visit with another like-minded farmer who may grow things a little, certainly grows things a little bit differently than I do, and maybe very differently. And I bet it's it's hugely educational. I bet it, I was going to say I bet it's really instructive to go and inspect other farms and see what their systems are like and it see is. what they're growing. I mean, all the all the things that we do through PFI. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. it's a similar sort yep. of approach. Yeah, like it them. is, and and I really appreciate that. Um, do I need to be certified? I don't. My customers don't demand it. They they want to know that we're chemical free. They want to know that I have an open door policy and they can come and see how we grow their food. Um, they want to be able to talk to me, but. But I appreciate supporting a grassroots organization like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, a couple of questions have come up in the chat here. Is there anything for the CSA that doesn't go in the box? 
Occasionally, yes. Most of the time I try and avoid it because that's when I make mistakes. <laughs> um, but melons, when we get into melon season, there's no way I can get a watermelon in those boxes. So those we take in on the side and I try my best to remember to make sure that everyone gets one. Um, so they're probably the number one thing that doesn't make it in the box. Um, How many different, is it, do you just grow watermelons or you, do you get into two I mean, different lots. kinds of watermelon and one cantaloupe. The cantaloupe is a miniature. Okay, that's easy. And we can usually get it in the boxes. Um, other than that, pretty much everything goes in the box. Mm -hmm. um, and then one more, is there a preference on when and where certain things go in box? Like is there a sort of box packing order? There is, and that's that numerical order that I put it in. It, um, is very uh, recognizes weight and distribution in the boxes sure. um, and as far as where they go in the rest of the box um, I take the opportunity to introduce two of my spectacular crew members yeah. uh, both of which are now in their sixth season of working for me and they know you know that's that's been a that's been a long learning process of how does it fit best and you can't just put your thing in where it's most convenient you have to put it in where it doesn't make the next thing more complicated to get in. And, and the rule of the farm is everything fits in the box. So it's, it's a bit of a vet, vegetable Tetris, but, uh, but you know, the crew's well practiced at, at moving boxes. That sounds like a, like some kind of metaphor. Like the rule of the farm is everything has to fit in the box. Right. And so the question like, when do you need to get a bigger box or when do you need? Right. <laughs> right. And we did switch boxes. Since a couple of years ago, um, COVID was our was our kick in the seat to finally um, go to a plastic box. We had been packing for you know 14 years in wax produce boxes, and we loved them. And everybody in the CSA had two with their name on them, so they brought me back there. And we're 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 off. <laughs> I was going to say it seems like the screen hasn't moved in a while. All the questions are coming from Liz. <laughs> I'm not even. I know. Nervous. Okay, so we're back on. So we're, we're packing in a hard surface plastic box um, that we take to the delivery locations. Our customers unload into their own bags. Mm -hmm. We bring boxes back home, wash and sanitize, nice. stack and dry, and then they're ready to go for the next round. And so that's really smart because then you don't have, you're not dealing with um, trading the box, washing the box, doing the, yes. like, yeah. And, you know, we were, we were forever running into the, oh, they forgot the box, this, that, and the other thing. So now if they forget the bo their bag, um, it's either a scramble or they walk out of the pickup with an armload of produce. But, you know, our customers are incredibly responsible. They, they're just those kind of people. We have not had a single incidence unless it was a sub picking up a box for the last year and a half of, of someone showing up without a way to carry away their produce. So, um, I was afraid that it was going to be a painful change for us, and it was not. It, the, you know, COVID allowed that pivot. It, it gave us the impetus to do it, and it was a great change. Mm -hmm. Well, and if people, I mean, if others are like I am, like you just have to learn to just keep bags in the car because yep. you're going to need them for something. Yep. So, yep. Yep, and we have seen we have seen CSA boxes packed out into some really funny things, like like a giant tent bag that the guy had <laughs> in his trunk. You know, make it work. We're we're all about making it work. Yep, I've yep, great. So um, we started to segue a little bit earlier to talking about staff, and I know that staffing is something that for lots of farms is a huge issue. Yes, and you have unlocked a secret. I have, and it's it is the greatest resource on our farm. We have good soil and great crew. Um, so we have we have neighbors that are a, a large family, and we have been very fortunate that uh, uh, six years ago their two oldest daughters uh, decided to come work for us, and the following year the next younger daughter came to work for us, and and now we are at sister number four. Um, and they are my entire crew at this part in the season. Earlier, we had we had a short season employee that was not related to any of us. Um, but yeah, I'm incredibly fortunate. They are they are uh, my third closest neighbor, so they're very close by, and and they are the most truly the most valuable resource on the farm. And returning year after year, and yeah, with any luck of new employees to come. <laughs> yes, yes. Fortunately, they have lots of younger sisters who, who all are waiting for their turn to uh, work at the farm, I've been told. So we, we continue to cultivate those relationships to make sure that that happens. That's good. And so do you, um, 
do you, it, obviously this is the time when you work with them most. What, and I'm curious about if you use them off season or like at other times of the year. And I'm also curious about like, what is your CSA season? How many weeks does it run? When, you know, do you do any like seasonal, like specialty things, sure. things like that? So our, I'll, I'll start with the CSA because it's the quickest question. Um, our CSA runs 20 weeks, first of June through mid-October. Um, and then we also do another delivery program called Veggie Mail. That's a custom order every week during this time of the year um, and every two weeks during the back side of the calendar. Um, we send out an order form, our email list orders what they want, and we deliver it to the same locations we deliver our CSA. So our CSA members roll over into that winter program. Oh, great. Um, so we deliver year round. And as far as my crew, um, they come on full time, uh, depending on their own schedules, um, anywhere from the second week of April to the fourth week of April. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will always take them as early as I can get them. And then they work full time hours, usually through the end of October. And then we go to reduced hours November through December, and then they're off. Um, and they're by December, they're very reduced hours. They really just come in to help me harvest and pack for those veggie mail orders. Um, but uh, then once we hit the first of the year, they're off until they're back on for the next season in April. Okay, great. Oh, let's see, a couple other questions coming through in the chat here. Where things go in the box? How long did it take to train up the employees? Best type of, best tips for Best, any tips for training staff? Um, I have learned with each successive group of employees to be a better employer. So I kind of let my employees train me on how to be a better boss. Um, and we laugh that I have a t-shirt that last year's crew made for me that says boss. And I'm going to put a Y on the end of it because I'm bossy. Um, leadership skills. Leadership That's what those skills. Are. Yeah. Um, I think. One of the things that was hard for me to learn, and I think it's especially hard for women to learn um, in managerial roles, especially in a place like a farm where there is not corporate structure to give you some parameters, is that um, it is great to be friends with your crew and with your employees, um, but you have to be the boss first and friendly second. And that was a slow and painful lesson for me to learn. Um, and luckily, now that I have a crew that's been with me so long, they're, they truly are my friends. They're, they're my family. And, and, uh, but it, it took a number of years to get to where uh, I was comfortable um, laying down the line. You know. Mm -hmm. It, it all comes down, I am ultimately responsible for the ship and, and it has to run efficiently and smartly or I'm not happy and then nobody's happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are good, good lessons to learn that I think just come with experience it is. and, you know. Yep. So a um, couple more questions about the boxes. Mm -hmm. Now you had mentioned that um, there was a farm, Grinnell Heritage Farm, yep. that was divesting of them because they were retiring. Yes. And so you sort of gathered them from there have you looked into what is the unit price of these kinds of boxes and whether it is a possibility to get lids or- Right, so these, these do have lids. Um, I Ultimately, I wanted a one piece mm -hmm. unit um, like the round trip boxes, uh, but I, I couldn't find them at a price that I was willing to pay and also that was in the right size. Um, I, I would rather take a moderately sized box that is full then deliver a great big box that is half full. Yeah. yeah. So um, this box is is slightly larger than our half bushel boxes that we traditionally packed in. And um, so it was the perfect size. It fit, they fit our crates, they fit our vehicles. Uh, so the the lid, I, I was really hesitant about the having an, an unattached lid. But the fact that they never go home with people, they come back to the farm with me, um, has made it a manageable thing. Uh, I do not know what the unit price is for these, and honestly, I don't even remember what I paid for them secondhand. Um, but it, it compared very favorably with having to replace waxed cardboard boxes for a season or two. For sure. For sure. I can see that. Um, all right. So... 
I am going to ask you, we talked about the Certified Naturally Grown, and um, we've talked about a lot of, how have you seen, you said you've been doing this for 15 years, how many CSAs did you start out with? Members? Yes. Uh, and um, I, I'm curious about how it's grown and changed over time with a huge asterisk on the entire last year. Right. And then I will also ask you to talk about how the last, how you have adapted and pivoted in the last year. Sure. Um, so we started, um, the farm uh, had its first season in 2005 and we were at the farmer's market and we knew that we wanted to do CSA, but we planned to do um, a minimum of two years farmer's market, preferably three, uh, before we dove into CSA. And our entire first season, people kept asking, our market customers kept saying, do you have a CSA? Do you have a CSA? Won't you have a CSA? Can I be in your CSA? Uh, and so we kind of let uh, customer pressure uh, set our schedule. And our second year growing, we had a 13-member CSA. So it was very, very small. Um, it was probably still too early to have had a CSA. We just got lucky that year that it was a decent weather year and we could actually grow and fill boxes or grow items and fill boxes. Um, and after that, we started a very, sl very, very slow, like glacial growth. Um, the barn we're in was not, didn't exist at that time. So we were in a little teeny tiny space um, that allowed um, very, very slow growth just because we didn't have the space to store anything or even to lay the boxes out. Uh, so that the growth was small and I said that I was going to top us out at 50 mem. I didn't ever want more than 50 members. Um, and, uh, then as we got up against that 50 member and it was comfortable and things were, were going okay. And then COVID hit and, all heck broke loose in the vegetable world. Um, we, things had been tough for CSAs for a number of years uh, nationwide. Uh, most of the CSAs were not running at capacity. We, early on, we had a two-year waiting list for our CSA. And for the previous three years before 2020, uh, we couldn't fill. We couldn't fill it. We'd get close, but we couldn't quite fill it. And... Um, Emma, is, can you, I don't want to drop our signal, but I'm wondering if you could come in and sort of zoom in on how she's packing these onions, but I'm wondering if you could come in and sort of zoom in on how she's packing these onions. <laughs> You're doing good, Emma. <laughs> Oh, she's really gently, and we talked about the order that things are packed in the box. So we have this box first, and this was second, and then peppers were third, and beans, and yeah, yeah, beans that's fine. Just, then the just look at the list, see what makes sense to go in next. And then there are some herbs coming in to the next. Would you mark the cucumbers? Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, and what is this one? You know what some people... Rosal. Are we to that point now? So the last thing that's going in this box is Roselle. Pack, pack what you can and sell and get one of those. All right. So um, you were talking about... Oh, growth. Your growth. Yeah. And so 2020, you know, all heck broke loose. Um, and kind of overnight, we had... Um, over a hundred people on a waiting list for a CSA that was already full and which was great and very exciting and kind of overwhelming. Um, so we did expand um, our availability up to 60 for last season and then had a huge waiting list going into this season, um, which was great. I don't trust that the, that trend is going to hold again. I think, you know, we as human beings have short memories and as more things open up and there are more options again and people can travel and do all of their summer things that, that CSA will probably settle back down and, and we'll see that number dec decline again. But in that time, um, we, because we were already doing veggie mail on the back side of the calendar, we are, when farmers markets closed, we were able to just continue that 
through the summer season. So now we run both of those programs concurrently and we have dropped farmer's market. Okay. So we no longer are a farmer's market vendor. And are you, do you anticipate going back to that at any point? Not, I would prefer not to. Mm -hmm. I would prefer not to. This system works so well for us. Um, I've done farmer's market for 15 years. Um, and uh, we have a very large market booth. We have a very large and extensive setup when we do market. And uh, I was doing it alone with a volunteer. And whew, I, m my body and mentally, I, I'm just kind of done. Yep. Done doing it. I miss being at farmer's market and I miss having those customers and that interaction. But the fact that I know what we need to harvest every week, we harvest per order and we don't have waste. I don't have products sitting in the sun starting to wilt. I know everything that goes off my farm is top quality and my customers get it chilled. Um, our pickup locations for veggie mail are both air conditioned so my stuff isn't sitting out in the August heat. Um, and, and we can serve customers who for whatever reason um, aren't going to farmer's market. So we're, we're hitting a niche that we weren't hitting before, and I really appreciate that. That's really cool. Um, and I think, that's, I think that's a really interesting transition, I mean, in light of everything, but also um, in the sort of growth and development of your business, in your sort of, sort of maturation as a business, going from from the one thing to a different kind of thing. Yeah. Where you have a little a little more control. Like it kind of is like pulling it back in a little bit. Yes, it is. It's a we're a tighter operation mm -hmm. than than we used to be. Um, and it it does offer us some more control and uh, some more sleep, which is really helpful too. Um, but we couldn't have ever gotten to that point without farmers market because we wouldn't have had the base of customers. You wouldn't have had the visibility, you wouldn't have had the interactions, right. you wouldn't have had the relationships with other growers probably. That's right. And mm -hmm. we were very marketing lazy because we were at such a big and popular market. Market like downtown, was the downtown Des Moines farmers Des Moines. market. Um, we had great visibility. We didn't do any other marketing. Um, you know, we were on Facebook and we did the market and that was, that was really it. And so leaving the market um, has, has meant that we have to be more active in our marketing if we want to maintain a wide customer base mm -hmm. because we no longer have that visibility, um, which we had really taken for granted. So I'm getting some questions yeah. about this last thing that <laughs> went in the box. I bet. Yes. Uh, that's Roselle. Okay. Um, so it is, it is not, uh, this is the first time the CSA is getting it this season and it is not a main, I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to see if it's going to good. It's not a main vegetable for us. It's, it's an accent vegetable. Um, and it's one that we learned about when we were, um, mentoring one of the, uh, uh, global greens farmers through the PFI labor for learning or not labor for learning the beginning farmer program oh fabulous and so so you know we hope that we taught them um, as much as they taught us very good and how do you use or Roselle? prepare the Roselle someone was asking is it for a tea um, and where do you get the seed good uh, so the tea is usually made from the calyxes or the the spent blooms um, and we really don't have a long enough, go ahead, Anna. we really don't have a long enough growing season to produce those. So we, uh, this isn't so much used as a tea as it is for a green, um, and you can use it in, in fresh and cooked uses. It's very much like French sorrel mm -hmm. in its flavor. Um, sometimes the, the drink is called Jamaican sorrel. Um, so it's that lemony tart flavor and uh, blends well with other greens. It's awesome in salsa and uh, pesto and mixed with other greens. It's great in soups. Adds so, a brightness. Yes. Adds, adds a little texture. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's kind of great on sandwiches instead of lettuce. Oh, that sounds good. But it's a yeah. nice hot weather green. Excellent, excellent. All right, so um, what else? So how much more do we have to go here? These boxes are looking almost full. They are getting pretty full. What number do we think we're on, ladies? I see a box of tomatoes here. This is a, like, what looks like an upcycled blueberry box. Yes, yes, we do a lot. I hate plastic. Um, 
So we do accept returns from our customers on their pint and quart plastic containers. They come back on the farm, they get rewashed, re-sanitized, and they go back out again. Excellent. So our, our customers appreciate that they have an outlet for that, and we appreciate that we don't have to spend money on plastic, which we don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right on. Uh, so I'm guessing we are within uh, probably three items from the end of the box. Okay. It looks like our plus ones are are going out now. So we've got okra going out. Okay. Um, and uh, all right. Yep. I see red okra. Little little bags of red okra growing into the box. And yep. so you'll you'll do the plus ones yep. and um, then the herb share. You have three herb shares. You said and we do. And we've still got some of our lighter weight stuff hasn't gone in. So we've still got bunches of basil to go in. Um, my guess is broccoli and cauliflower still going in. Um, and tomatoes. So, uh, tomatoes will be the last thing before herb share. Big, okay. Big slicer tomatoes. Oh, great, great, great. All right. So with that, I think we are about ready to wrap up our live from the great. farm. We, we almost watched your whole pack here, but we're going to miss the last couple, <laughs> the last couple of items. Um, but this has been really fantastic. It's so helpful. Like it's so fun and like mesmerizing to watch how right. the system works and, um, to learn about how your staff has been has been helping your your you know has been such an important oh, piece of your pie here yes so all right so with that i'm going to go ahead and wrap things up um thanks so much for joining us live from the farm for today at Kate farms again i'm jacqueline with Crest from farmers of iowa we do live from farms every tuesday so check out farmers and um, What sanitizer product are you using? Uh, we use um, a mix of, uh, so we use peroxide as our base cleaner and then a 5% uh, of the bleach mix. Excellent. Okay, fantastic. All right. And. Okay. Oh, I did. I did. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody, for being here today. So long.